A U.S. congressional investigation into contracting in Iraq and Afghanistan has found that $34 billion have been wasted or misspent. By the end of September, an estimated $206 billion will have been spent on contracts and grants in both wars. The congressional panel's draft report leaked to the Wall Street Journal says that in one case, a subcontractor in Afghanistan paid one-fifth of the money he received to anti-government fighters for, quote, protection. Another project that paid Afghan farmers to work in their own fields cost $1 million a day. A spokesman for the congressional panel working on the report has confirmed $20 billion, about 10 percent of the total spent on contracts, is likely to have been wasted, but he has said that uh, the total could in the end be far, far higher. For more on this, we're joined by David Eisenberg, a defense and security analyst. He's the author of the book Shadow Force, Private Security Contractors in Iraq. These, these numbers are breathtaking, particularly in a time of austerity. And yet at the same time, you can't help but feel, well, we sort of know this is happening. We have known, partly because of books like yours and so forth, that this is going on and yet nothing changes. Well, nobody's ever tried to total up in its entirety these costs before. so. This total is, is sort of unprecedented. Yes, um, every six months, Special Inspector General for Iraq Reconstruction comes out with a semi-annual report. There's always a section on the latest fraud cases. Some cases are more famous than others. Uh, last year, the government uh, charged Agility, a Kuwaiti firm, uh, formerly known as a public warehousing company, of overbilling the government to the tune of $8.5 billion. Uh, there have been other firms um, which uh, have been famous for keeping two sets of books, uh, billing the government for broken down forklifts. Right, uh, and, and so we get, we get these figures, we get these reports, now you know, handily collated apparently in this report, and yet these same contractors just get hired again and they carry on doing it. Yeah. Um, the government's attitude toward these companies is that uh, we, may, we wrap you on the knuckles back then, uh, when we find out about your misgivings, uh, we punish you to the best of our ability, but they treat them in the same way that the government treated uh, the big Wall Street banks at the beginning of the financial crisis, which is essentially, uh, we can't do without you. Uh, you are too big to fail, and you know we, we are never going to take a step like uh, debar you permanently from getting future contracts because we just can't face that. Um, but surely, what about in the current, current climate uh, of, of talk of you know, reducing spending and waste and so forth? Might there not be some movement on Capitol Hill to perhaps go after the defense contractors before the poor and the elderly? Um, it's much it's much harder to go after these firms uh, than trying to go after Lockheed Martin. Uh, Lockheed Martins and Norfolk Grumman's of the world make things; they're tangible objects. You, you can go after uh, an F-35 Joint Strike Fighter. You can reduce the total amount to buy. But when you talk about a professional services contractor, an armor group, a KBR, uh, which which do everything from guard diplomats to produce the meals at the dining facilities, uh, you're faced with the prospect of what exactly do you cut? Uh, do you not feed the troops? Uh, do you you know? Do, do you uh, not get supplies convoyed down the road? Uh, Does it suit the government then? I mean, to go with the Wall Street comparison, then to have quite a, a weak regulatory structure. Uh, and, and to have it rather murky as well, so that we don't entirely know how much is being wasted. Is there a sense of collusion? Or there was just a report yesterday in Wired about uh, the government preventing the, the, the oversight of the mercenary army in Iraq, for example, that they're hiring. My belief is that over the years the government has chosen a policy of deliberate obfuscation with respect to some aspects, not all of them, of contracting. Uh, one glaring example, of course, is simply reporting casualties. Uh, there is no central repository, or at least no uh, central repository of good, detailed, up-to-date information on the people who have been killed and wounded, who will ultimately be a cost to the U.S. taxpayer because it is U.S. government policy that when those people get uh, wounded or killed, there is mandatory workman's comp that has to be paid, which is ultimately borne by the taxpayer. That's so just one of many things we don't know. David Eisenberg, thank you very much.